test, test, <laughs> test. How you doing today, brother man? Good morning. I'm doing just fine. All right, that's what I'm talking about. I'm glad um, to still be here. That's what I'm talking about. Well, my name is George Giles. Um, this is Jasmine Duckworth, and we oh, just yeah. came to interview you about your experience at one of the first African American I mean African American high schools in our area. Um, first question I have for you is: What were the years that you attended, and did you graduate? I attended. Uh, I came. Well, I came to the high school in 1958, and I graduated in uh, 1962. All righty. A nice four-year stint. That's what I'm talking about. Did you graduate with honors or anything like that, Brother Mendes? No, I didn't. All right, look, no, that's I not did. a problem. That's not a problem. <laughs> All righty, so um, one of the questions that I was really interested of getting to is tell us a little bit about your family and, you know, how family life was during the time before we get into your school experiences. Well, my family life was very good because uh, I had a mother and father and they saw that we had and uh, they provided for us very well. We were, we were very fortunate in, in, in our day and time. You know, uh, they had a roof on our head, food in our mouth, and clothes on our back. That's you know? what I'm and they saw that we had to do what we needed to do in the world they didn't take no for an answer. Mm -hmm. uh, getting back to if I wanted to drop out of school, I couldn't because they pushed me, and I'm glad that they did. You know. Alrighty, and I'm so sorry, sir. I did not get your name. If you mind stating that for I'm me. I'm sorry. My name is Maurice Gary. Alrighty, Maurice Gary. Alrighty, nice to officially meet you, Mr. Maurice. Um, with the family aspects, you know, and your background being so, um, being so stern and everything like that. Do you think that having two parents was, you know, a blessing for you? You know, a lot of people didn't have that experience Most growing up. Most definitely. Most right? definitely. Yes. Um, to go back on your educational experience at PAX, um, can you tell me one of the first memories that you have of a school? Um, you know, you going in or you meeting somebody that was very, you know, nice to you or something like that? Well, my experience, uh, when, when I came to high school, uh, like I said, I wasn't the best student in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I guess one of these students that wanted to do what he wanted to do. However, uh, well, it goes back. My general area where I lived at, a lot of the teachers lived in the area. So it was like family oriented because uh, not only your parents, but they pushed and strived, you know, to keep you trying to go ahead. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of, lot of the teachers, in fact, 90% of my teachers, you know, we were uh, very close. Yes, that's what you If I got in trouble, they would, you know. I would say from the new generation standpoint, um, Having teachers that care definitely help us, but we're taught to go to school, you know, pretty much no matter what, that if it's in synthesized, we get good grades, we get good money for it. Um, whereas in your case, you had to go to school because you needed a job, you needed exactly. you needed bare minimal funds to get your family through. Exactly. We don't feel that pressure nowadays, so, you know, to hear that is kind of very surreal. Um, just to hear that, you know, your community is so tight-knit that you can feel a little bit family-wise with your teacher, I 
still want to strive for that, to be honest. And, yes. you yeah. know, I think that's a beautiful thing, especially coming from an African-American community. Well, let me go back to say, you know, like I said, uh, when I came along, it was segregated, not integrated. So mm -hmm. uh, you had to, uh, how do I say it? Well, you know, you couldn't go there, you couldn't go there. You know, so you had to stay within your perimeter, you know, to a degree, mm -hmm. you know. And this, uh, I think probably, how do I say, at that particular time was good. Yeah, because, I can see that. Because you knew everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, this day in time, you don't know anybody anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's, they don't care whether you do, do or do not. Mm -hmm. But like I said, back in my day and time, teachers wanted you to strive forward. All right, you know, and we're going to talk a little bit more about um, your schooling. Um, how did you commute to school? How did you get there? Did you, you know, ride a bus? Did you walk? Yeah, did you we had school buses. Right, and, and, and with that, the school bus drivers lived in our neighborhood. Okay, so that's cool. We just get up and walk to the bus. Mm -hmm. Those that lived in the neighborhood, and then, you know, she would go around and pick up. And what, what about those who lived a little bit further from the school? Did she go around? And yes, they had, they had different buses go different okay. routes. Okay. Different and they were African American routes. drivers as well. Right. Yes. That's crazy. Right. Everything was African American. That was really yes. nice. Yes. Um, did you want to go to the high school that they chose for you? Did you want to go to the um, academy here, or did you want to, you know, span out and go to a different school at the time? Well, at that particular time, you had no choice. Yeah. Uh, well, 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 no, let me take that back. The choices were the area that I lived in, you had a particular school that you had to go to. Now, if you wanted to go to another school, then you had to move Yeah. to go to another school. Well, like, school I... This school was Princeton County Training School when I mm -hmm. went to it, and they changed the Union County School. But you had Booker T. Washington, you had Crestwood. In order to go to those schools, you had to move yeah. in their area. I so, see what you're saying. Uh, there was no, you know, where I lived that there was no choice but this school here. All right, now I hear that, you know, coming up and shaping your life, you pretty much had no choice but to stay in school and be educated. Um, did you want to go to high school coming up, or did you want to go get a job and work? Well, that's a tough question. I, I wanted to go to school and then I didn't, you know. Uh, but me, myself, I always worked. So in mm -hmm. school, I, I had a job. Uh, I'm sorry I, to interrupt you, but do um, you think your experiences as a black man pushed you towards school or pushed you toward more of the independent job route, like you were saying? Uh, that's a tough question, too. Also, because, like I said, um, I know I needed to be in mm -hmm. school. Exactly. But I thought maybe I could do better if I go out and get a job and, and work and do uh, for myself. I think that I like I like that you said that because I can correlate that to now. A lot of men, you know, we take that upon ourselves, whether you black or white. We take it upon ourselves to look at, you know, our family and see who else we got around us and want to provide naturally. Exactly. But as far as, you know, being a black man, I think you especially, you can attest to that's an added factor to it. Because now you don't know if your education is going to get you a job or if hard work is going to get you that job. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? So The only thing with that which kept me going to school, uh, you, you have a job. But you had to have an education, at least a high school diploma, to advance. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, if you didn't have a high school education or, or, or you know, or go to school, then they give you what they wanted to give you. You know, and you had to accept that, or don't work at all. But with an education, it it, it sort of made you a little step higher. And it gave you a like a separation between you exactly. and another person. Yes. Alrighty. Um, in your experience, what was a typical day like at Kempsville Union or the academy for you? You know, what did the day start like? Did you go to PE first? Did you go to your homeroom classroom? Did you go? Oh no, you, you uh, here you went to your, when you got in school you went to your homeroom class. Okay. And then from there you went to your various classes. Yes, sir. You know your history, English, uh, math, uh, 
And I was actually going to get into that next. What was one of your favorite subjects, man? I know we talked about a little <laughs> earlier. You said you didn't have as much history to learn from. Right, exactly. Uh, I guess my favorite uh, class was, ooh, now that I think about it, mm-hmm. you know, I don't guess I had a favorite class as per se. I, I, I went because I had to go. Yeah. You know. Understood. Uh, I, now, I know you're going to laugh, but the <laughs> class that I enjoyed was uh, physical ed. Yeah. You know. You got out and got to play some football or some baseball or something like exactly. that. Exactly. Do you think that I was going to actually get into that later on? Um, do you think that um, sports was essential to how? black communities were set up back then as it is now where everybody's training to be the next LeBron it's, James it's or Michael of, Jordan? It sort of led to that, mm-hmm. but uh, like, like I said, when I was in school, I was too small to play, yeah. so that's why I was in the band, uh-huh. and I was too small to play sports, so that was a no-no for me, you know, to think that I could progress by playing sports and, you know, you know, get a step ahead. It so, was almost like a, a pipe dream, wasn't it? Yes, it was something that yes, could be on yes, the background where you yes. you still needed that education. Exactly, exactly. Um, do you feel that your school was properly funded? Do you think y'all had, you know, enough activities to do or, you know, just fair amount of lunch and everything no, like that? No. Well, the, 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 I truthfully say the, the cafeteria uh, and the, the, the people like that, they did what they had to do. But like you said, it, it wasn't properly, but they, we may do, put it that way, we may do. Um, and one of the biggest questions for me um, today would be, in your community of African-American people back then, um, was it really important to you to see black people in a role of authority or you know, to be well-respected among the community, whether that's a black or white person? Because I can say, um, there's a couple African American people in my life that have definitely changed it for the better. Um, got me into my heritage and extent like that. Yeah. And I would say that their authority over their domain has given them a lot more room to work there as well. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna spread a little bit. Okay. But in my day and time, uh, how do I say it? In my community, we had black on businesses. Okay. And this day and time. You don't. Understood. You don't. Understood. Uh, if we wanted a haircut, we had pop shop go to. If we wanted beauty parlor, if we wanted a restaurant, we had restaurants. So uh, we had black owned businesses. Mm-hmm. Uh, my my family, well, my, my mother's family, they owned it. They, uh, it was, um, I guess you could call it. Uh, it was they they did they sold chicken mm-hmm. stuff like that. They just called like it a little diner. And but it was black owned, mm-hmm. you know. And like I said, and they they stride, you know. They, like I said, in our community, it was like a family. It's tight knit. Yeah. Yes, sir. You know, um, that close relation. Um, did that help the school out any mean? I know you said that the school wasn't funded. Did these black businesses at if, the time if, were they if, able if, to if, if they afford? Need, if, if they needed, you know, for, then. We we have fundraisers, yeah. you know. Particular to if there was anything that uh, the school needed or whatever, we had, you know, we had fundraisers and made the money like that. That's really dope. Man. Yeah. Um, one of the last questions I'm gonna get to is, um, how does it feel? Or did it? Did you feel any separation between black students and white students in that time? And was it more of an educational purpose, or was it just a full separation of color? Now, to answer that question, like I said, when we came along, uh, we had like a shack to go to school in. White students, could I have allowed to say that? White. Yes, you are. They, they had nice, nice. Like schools, you mm-hmm. know, and you could walk by, but you couldn't go in. You know, we had a shack over here, they had a school over here, you know. And I often wondered about that why can't we just go there too, mm-hmm. you know? But then you come to realization, you know, if they don't want you there, then don't go, you know, because 
like I said, uh, I guess with me, when I came along, the uh, whites stayed over there and we stayed over there. So it didn't bother me, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, some of the things that they had bothered me because I thought that we should have had them too, you know. Alrighty, and my last question would be, um, you attended in 58, so you were in the prime of the Civil Rights Movement. Yeah. I really want to know, did you face any resistance or backlash when you attended the school? And was it, you know, was it hard on you to go through those things, if so? Uh, it wasn't, how do I say it? It wasn't hard on me, as per se, because I learned to ex accept certain things. Mm -hmm. And then when things didn't go my way, then I did what I had to do. Now, I'm going to leave that question like that, you know. Uh, it's, 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 it's hard for me to say because, like I said, uh, I didn't need them and they didn't need me, so, you know, I left it alone. But if I had to have something, then, you know, from them, then I got it. Understood, so, understood. Um, I think you have a very unique way of putting it. And, you know, I've heard from a lot of people your age is that we did it with hard work. Exactly. We, we put our head down and we got things exactly. done. Exactly. Um, to go on, um, I would say, you know, this experience alone has pretty much left me with the ideas that black and white people necessarily didn't hate each other or did not want to understand one another, they just were separate beings and exactly. black and white was just separate at the time. Exactly. So exactly. there was no animosity and if there was, there was room for understanding as, as well. So exactly. I think that both communities being tight knit, you know. Uh, uh, let me say this. Go ahead, brother. Uh, like I said, during the segregation, mm -hmm. the, uh, I had white people that uh, uh, they would have accepted me like their child, mm -hmm. you know. And, but you can't, you know, that was just one or two, you know. So, uh, you, you know, they treat you nice, but you don't know how to take that because you don't know whether they're going to turn their back on you or not. Because over there, they don't want you, period. Yeah. You know, so it made it kind of, uh, you, you accepted that, but then you was a little leery of it. You know, yeah. because you don't know how the outcome is going to be. Understood. Yeah. It's like, um, it's kind of just walking that road with a, exactly. a weary eye. You know, you are you be being nice to me to be nice to me? Or are you being nice to me so that you can do something to me down the road? I heard that, man. You know, so I was always aware of that. You know? Okay. All right, now. Mr. Gary, I really appreciate your time, man. And I thank all your questions. I think they answered a lot of um, a lot of the things that I had in my mind for the time. Okay. It's not accurately depicted in the books and everything that we learned. So I did exactly. have a great experience with you. Um, thank you for all your time, brother, today, brother, man. And I wish you the best of luck in the rest thank of Thank you. And, and I wish you the best of luck because you, my man. day is coming too. Hey, look, man, we all yeah, going to be there one day, like brother. Like I said, man. you know, I... I guess I was one of the fortunate ones in life because I went where I wanted to go, did what I had to do, and I enjoyed life. That's a product of everything yes. you've been through, though, man. And everybody can say that. Yes, sir. I do. I understand that. Um, it's really nice hearing from a black person, though. As as a black elderly man, we don't get to have these talks, man on man. Okay. Um, we don't get to have these talks as much. Yeah. So. Um, just experiencing it with you, it actually feels a little bit closer today. So I really appreciate that. All right, thank you very much. Yes, okay, great, because they're going to ring the fire alarm in a minute. <laughs> oh, we just swelled up to those perfect. perfect. <laughs> right. Okay, so we've done this. Right.